All right, shalom akim, wa akwaf. Hey, yaba shemal shai, brak a thumb to my dear brothers out there. The little man of sisters holding down the word of their heavenly father with spirit and the truth. And all hopes to be saved, to receive salvation, seeing that we're in the, the end times, you know, this crazy troubling times, Jacob's troubles times. All right. Before we start, though, let's give all praise to our God, our power, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Harakakwadash. Yahweh, what you just heard was the Paleo Hebrew. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, okay? Yahweh Shai, that's the name of his beloved son. The Harakakwadash is the Holy Spirit that we come in, which, which is spoken about in John, the 14th and the 16th chapter, all right? The Holy Spirit. Double eyes apostles over there, great millstone who have taught us the true understanding of the scriptures. And have taught us how to deal with hell by telling their experiences, seeing the men have been in the truth decade upon decade. They have showed us. So now it's our turn, and we taking up our plows, and we learning how affliction feels, and we learning how to deal with it. And also now we become teachers. So now that for the newcomers, and then just to remind brethren about the, the journey. Now we're able to do that, seeing that we are going through the same trials, all written in the scriptures. Peace and mercy once again to your brother's house. From, from days you're up to days you're down, embrace them all. Something that I've heard from Apostle Kabar going back, man, over a decade ago, all right? Apostle Kabar mentioned to us, brethren, look, you're gonna have more down days than up. The Apostle Gabor and all the rest of the apostles, don't get me wrong, all the rest of the apostles that explain these different things through various lessons. But specifically, I remember Apostle Gabor talking about these down and up days that you're going to encounter in his word. And now that we've entered to the word of the Heavenly Father, you brethren that have been around, if you ain't, if you if you somewhat new to this thing, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to come to embracing. Your up and down days, they're going to come if they haven't already came. And that's something that all, all of us brethren already know. We know these things. But check it out, brethren. Sometimes it's just good to hear it again. You need to hear it again. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem al Shai, is about repetition. That's what he's about, repetition. He'll tell you the same thing over and over so that he can make sure that it's jammed in your head. And, so, and, and here it is. It's the year of the turn up. Esau didn't turn up. We didn't turn up doing videos. Well, guess what, brother? The Heavenly Father is not a false balance. Your hell going to turn up. All right? Seeing that you are man at the righteousness where the scriptures say, he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. You see? So as we get turned up in the spirit, guess what, brothers? You're going to have a turned up challenge on your, on your, on your, on your trial and your walk. But as the title say, you want to embrace them all, all of them. And this is some of the things I've learned throughout the years of dealing my, with my situations. I don't like to be to the Heavenly Father um, in a false balance, even just because I'm going through something. But I had to come to learn that. And in this lesson, I want to, I want to, I want to um, encourage brethren to have the same energy towards the Father when you're going through things that's high and when you and more importantly when you're going through things that's low all right so the first scripture i do have here is uh isaiah 48 and 10 it says behold i have refined thee but not with silver i have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction when i first actually came across that scripture man that scripture right there made me feel a little bit more special than how this world beat you down I feel a little more smash, uh, a little more special. The reason being because this journey or this this venture that we on, I like to call it a venture, just so I could, you know, I create strategy for my mind. A venture sounds fun. Now this this strategy or this adventure that we on, guess what, brothers? Y'all about Shmuel Shai chose this for us. Let's read the verse again. It says, um, "Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver." I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. All of us, brethren, you chosen here, man. 
all the different brethren you see across the um the YouTube from the apostles down to the the most um the youngest man all of us have been chosen not not because of us not because of you know anybody else no entity right you've been chosen because y'all by Shemel Shai gave you this walk he gave you this walk that's the reason why you see so just like it tell you what was that it's either John 15 and 16 or I always get them numbers flipped excuse me but all you gotta do is look it up it's easy work John 15 and 16 or 16 and 15 it tell you that you have not chosen me but I have chosen you so brethren you gotta first off when you're going through your, your crap you're going through everything you gotta understand that you was chosen to be able to go through that so then, you know, with me, it leaves a balance in my head. Like, well, shit, I could be a nigga in the world smoking motherfucking cigarettes or some shit. You know what I mean? I don't know. I could be a glutton, three hundred pounds somewhere with no with no spirit at all. I could be a cripple, man. I could be a game banger. I could be, you know, how you your mind tell you those different things. You gotta, you really gotta be in the spirit of, in the Lord to be grateful. When you be grateful, then you think about things like that. Well, I could have been this. I could have been that. But now nah, you chosen to catch hell for Yah Bashim Shai's sake. But see, the balance is this: that we know why we catch hell. First and foremost, you catching hell for your sins, bro. You catching hell for your sins, and you catching hell just because it's written that you're gonna catch hell. You catching hell because it's written that you're gonna catch hell. You are cursed, according to Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, bro. You ain't. Well, none of us. The curse is not gonna be. Um, off us into the Lord Yahweh Shai come back and that second covenant actually get get put into active active mode so we've been chosen to go through this and you have to you have to cope in your mind that you wanted those candidates and you signed up for the job all right so let's go right here to the famous scripture I had to jump to it I had to a very basic but look brothers when a very basic scripture but look brothers when I'm going through anything it be the milk that I remember. You know what I mean? It's always that. So I already know that when I go through different things, it's, it's really the simplicity in Yahweh Shai that keeps you going strong. The things that everybody can understand when it's just simply read. You don't, you don't really need to go into no definition. You don't really need to go into no strongs or you don't really need to precept it too much. Well, this is Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You have to remember, brethren, and me as myself, because guess what? If this is the year in the turn up, you best believe my hell and turned up. And I know. Be a man of understanding, man. All right? The scriptures talk about being children in malice, but being men in understanding. In other words, be a man in understanding. It don't matter how far you go in this thing. It don't matter how far you go. You're going to still be dealing with the temptations that come with this thing. And enticement to do sin. That's when you look up in the etymology. That's what the word temptation means. It means an enticement to do sin. You're going to be dealing with that. From the highest of us to the lowest of us, man. You see? So when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And are you greater than the master Yahweh Shai? Are you greater than the master Yahweh Shai? Nah. Well, Yahweh Shai caught death. Yahweh Shai caught hell all the way to his death. He caught hell all the way. I'm sorry. He caught hell all the way till he got on the cross for us. Cause he didn't die, man. He 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 actually um quickened, which means to become better. You see? He said, I live and forevermore. So excuse me for saying that just a couple seconds ago, man. But nonetheless, um Yahweh Shai went through it. All the way to the point where he where, where he um, went up to the father, man. You see? So you better prepare your soul and always be understanding that these are this is what this is what the this is the condition of the battle, as the angel told Ezra. It says, Set thy heart aright and constantly adore and make not haste in the time of trouble. And that's very important throughout the years I learned. Make not haste in the time of your trouble. When you first get put in the heat of your situations, brother, your, your mind going to be like um, like uh, somebody just dropped a bag of marbles and they, they just, 
they bouncing everywhere and they're scattering everywhere, man. That's what usually happens when, when unexpected hell or things come on to you that's very hard. But guess what, brothers? Just as I explained the analogy of the marbles, you're going to have to sit there, take a, you know, deal with, do, move accordingly and grab all those marbles up. You may have some marbles that went under the couch. You may have some marbles that um, you don't know how it got in that direction. You're like, man, I would have never thought to look there, but it's a marble over there. You're going to have to gather your thoughts, in other words. That's what I'm trying to uh, bring it back to. You're going to have to gather your thoughts and make not haste. It's, that's the time for you to, to, to pray to the Lord, man. Pray to the Lord. Control your angers. Remember the, the scripture talk about giving place to wrath. All right? Control your angers and collect yourself so that you could uh so that you could um be prepared to move forward. All right. So it said, make not haste in the time of trouble. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at that, that last end. So at the end of the day, our afflictions, brothers, real talk, brother, you want to understand or not, it's building you up. And, you know, you learn, you come into the word of Yahweh Shemel Shai, you learn the ways of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Well, the Heavenly Father is really like an austere, he's like a, um, he's an austere teacher, straight up. You know, like a forward man. Even it was explained that Yahweh Shah that he was austere. So the Heavenly Father, he don't really like, you know, he's very austere about what he say, what he do, and all that, man. You see? So um he puts us through things that's tough so that we could grow. And that's how it goes. Sometimes you may think to yourself, I'm just I'm telling you the thoughts of a man that's dealing with the Spirit of the Lord, you know. So don't don't get offended on me because I thought this. But sometimes you think to yourself, like, damn Lord, why you gotta do it like that? That shit's hurt. This shit hurt. Or God damn Lord. Fuck, I'm getting like, yeah. are you even there? I'm over here hanging. It feel like my intestines hanging out. You know, I'm just I'm I'm telling you and when you know when you're in the heat of your afflictions, man, your mind is kind of like like we explain those marbles, it'd be everywhere with everything. You know, but of course, the, the, the example of Job is set for us to never curse the Heavenly Father. Period. I don't care. If, we don't, it don't matter what you're going through. Never curse the Heavenly Father. And Job's story shows that. You know? So, you'll be increased at your last end. Well, let's go to a quick precept that proves that when you actually... Um, it says, uh, when you when you actually going through your things, it's always going to be an increase. You're going to be better. <laughs> like I heard one of the beloved uh, brother, the brother out there in Dallas, one of the beloveds told me he he was better. Uh, he was better a week from you know he got he you know he went through some things and he was better the next week. He was more he was way more sharper a week later. So the things you go through makes you sharper. It makes you sharper. You more sharper than last week. And, and that's just how the Lord moves. That's how he gets down, brothers. And you got to come to understand that. So let's go right here to show you, the, to prove that the Heavenly Father is about, um, He will increase. he's going to increase you. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 11 here. It says, um, it says, now no chastising for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Neither the less at the word, it yieldeth a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You see what happens to you? So you, of course, when you're going through it, don't feel good at all. I'm talking about, man, the other, I, I tell you straight up, the other day I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to talk for a couple of days, man. That's how long it lasted. But it's all good though. Just because I don't want to talk don't mean it didn't take away any of my morality or my faith in the Lord. But these these different afflictions that don't feel good, it places these different emotions on you. You got to be ready to, to embrace this. You got to be, like I said, prepare thy soul for temptation. You got to be ready for these different things that's going to hit your spirit, man. All right? But like I said, it yieldeth 
a peaceable fruit of righteousness, meaning to uh, it's going to grow. You know, that's what's going to happen to you at the end of whatever it is. So if you brother are dealing with financial demons, right? Well, you brother are going to learn. You're going to learn uh, how to be content. <laughs> you're going to learn how to be content. You're going to learn how to um, deal with your bread, your money more. So next for your next future events, you are more you're more mature with your money because the word mature means to um, to grow. That's what the word mature means. It means to grow. You're going to be more mature with your stuff. You see? So it yielded for peaceable fruit of righteousness, brothers. You're going to be better up here, sharper up here. That's what's going to happen in your spirit. And like I said a little bit a minute ago, you have brethren. We've been around and we've been dealing with this stuff and it never changes. You got to sometimes you need to hear it again. Sometimes you need to hear it again. And this be that that reminder or refreshment or maybe you going through it right now and you want to hear somebody just like uh, you. You asking the Lord to give you like a pat on the back and a lesson was that pat on the back. You see. All right. So it says um, it says it yielded for peaceable fruit of righteousness or to them that are exercised thereby. All those that serve in the Lord, you're exercising yourself in the Lord. But then when you read a little bit up in that very same chapter of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says, my son, despise not the chastising of the Lord. And here it is. We, we, brother, you got all of us let, weigh everything in the balance so you can have understanding on why you're going through your, your, your crap. Weigh it in the balance. Right? We know that the Lord said these things will happen. All right? We know that the Lord said that all these different things will happen. You are chosen in the furnace of affliction. You see? So let's jump back now to the book of Sirach. Verse... Um, Three again it says cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last end and that's that yieldable that yieldable fruit of righteousness um growing in within you by going through something all right if you're dealing with a woman problem you're going to learn how to deal with women more better all right if you're dealing with uh shit uh a job problem you're going to know how to get that job uh, the job that's more fitting to your life more better after the word you're going to learn more. You're going to get experience. People ain't going to just be able to push you over. All right? And then well, another thing that hell does for you is that it it um, it um gives you more of a solid grip on your emotions. You know, I don't need to be emotional like there, right there. I don't need to be emotional right here. I don't need to be emotional. I already know about all this. That's what it does. You see? So catching hell actually gives you a more foundated uh, version of yourself. All right? And it leaves you to the point where all you want to lean on is the Lord. That's all you need at the end of the day. All right? So hell, hey, I just thought about it right now. Hell gets you closer to the Heavenly Father. And that's just amazing to understand. And that's kind of crazy how the Lord set it up. It's, you know? So jumping to verse 4, it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our change to a lower state. Whatever the Lord decided to um, Job, was it, Job 33 and 15? It says, when you sleep at night, the Heavenly Father gets your instruction. He placed the instructions in your mind. So whatever the Lord placed upon thee, as it, as it just wrote, wrote, it says, take cheerfully. Now, one of the things I had to come, when, one of the things I had to come to learn was like, how do you take something that's so, um, so hurtful or something that really fucks you up? Mentally, how you take that cheerfully, you know what I mean? All right, well, then you, you, the comforter, the scriptures, the different things that say, the different things that tell you why, the what, where, when, who's, and why's, that basically answers every question. The, the scriptures, man, this is how you get cheerful. Then you can run to Acts when the different apostles is whooped for the Lord's name's sake. You can run to the Lord Yahweh Shai being a prime example. You can run to Job. The, the different scriptures, man, that leaves you cheerful. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm suffering for the Lord. Shit. You know what I mean? You know how you talk to yourself. 
<laughs> this truth, you're going to learn how to talk to yourself, man. <laughs> you're going to be talking to yourself, man. Fuck it. Because that's that's how this... Remember I talk about um, the, the Lord, Yahweh Shah, will be at the door in your mind in Revelation, the third chapter? You know? Well, that's how the spirit communicate with communes with you. You got to just be able... You got to be in the spirit to hear the voice. All right? You got to be in the spirit to hear the voice. All right? And that's only going to be to a man who's coming to the word of the Heavenly Father with his whole heart. He ain't got no backup plan. He ain't talking about, you know what, if the Lord don't come in this many amount of years, then I'm just going to dip out the back door. Nah, man. The ones that's fully locked into the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shai will be able to hear when the spirit is telling you something, man. You'll be able to feel it. Hear it and feel it. You see? So, um, it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our changed to a lower state. You got to be patient when you change to a lower state. And I had to learn that the hard way, certain situations. You know? And I don't know what's going to befall me in the near future. You know what I mean? All of us, brother. But one thing I do know, though, which I pray to remember when I'm in my, when, when every, all of us, brother, we pray to remember when we're in our afflictions that be patient when you change to a lower state. Be patient about it. You know what I mean? And in your patience, that's when you're praying to the Lord, man. That's when you're calling on Yahweh Shem El Shai. That's when you're telling him what happened. And don't be, don't, you know, when you get, get to ready to talk to Heavenly Father, don't be a, don't be like a nigga in the world that's going to tell a half truth for anything. If you was a part of the reason why your affliction came upon you because you decided to do something that was fucked up, that was, um, uh, excuse me, that was off. It was off. And that's part of the reason in hell. But, you know, the extras came. Somebody took it too far. Or somebody did this and that. You got to be real when you talk to the Heavenly Father. You have to be, man. As it is written in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the Heavenly Father searches the reins of the heart, man. You can't hide nothing from him. So keep it up front. Because because I, I say that because a lot of hell that's, I ain't going to say a lot, but certain hills that we go through because our flesh got the best of us. And you got to just keep it solid as a rock. You have to, man. You see? So... Um, it says, "Be patient when you are changed to a lower state." Let's go. Let's get a quick preset in Philippians four, because Paul had to Paul had to deal with the same um, things that we deal with, man. It, it, you know, as it's written in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. We all been dealing with this. You brethren have dealt with this before. This is not the first time any of us is dealing with uh, going through the going through the ringer, so to speak. But um, let's go right here to the book of Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Philippians 4 and 11, it says, it says, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned. You look at that, man. Check that verse out. This is, this is Paul addressing the, the Philippians. He said, look. Not that I speak in the respect of want, but I have learned with the ED at the end, making it past tense. Something he had to gather into experience. He says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Well, it said, be patient when you change to a lower state. So Paul explained to us that, look, you're going, you have to be content. Because what the, man, you had no control over the whole situation from the jump. When you just say, for instance, whatever problem you may be dealing with, is, you know, for the Lord's sake, you just dealing with it for trial's sake, whatever. You woke up that, just before the problem came, you woke up that very morning not even understanding what you was finna encounter, man. You know what I mean? You didn't understand that you was finna be, this is finna happen at this, or this, this point in time of the day and... You didn't know you had no control over what the Lord was getting ready to establish, man. So it just leads you to understand that whatever the Lord put upon you, you understand that you was chosen to deal with that situation. We also read that it may not feel good at all. It ain't going to feel good at all. But we know that at the end of that stick is going to be you'll yield something 
to make you better. You're gonna be quickened. You're gonna be made better somehow. You know, this is this is the trial of all the men of the Lord. So then you like you gotta know, understand that, brothers, be the being being content with what you understand and know and what you're going through your things. To be content. Shit. Man, like fuck, I'm going through it. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, it passes over though. It always passes over. And then like the title says, you have an up day. You feeling like nobody could touch you that day. You feeling like good that day. I don't know. But it just, this is how the trial, this is the, tri this is the condition of the battle. So jumping back to Philippians, it says, um, I know both how to be abased and how to be abound. Everywhere and in everything that I am instructed, both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Yahweh Shai who strengthens me. That's a very famous scripture that the world uses. You go into a Christian bookstore, any type of, you're looking on Amazon, you're looking for something that's scriptural. One of them scriptures that's going to use is uh, Philippians 4 and 13. I see it there all the time. I could do anything to, through Yahweh Shai who strengthens me. So Paul said he know how to be a base, he know how to be a bound. He know when he get, when the Lord got his thumb on him and he just like going through it. And he know when the Lord is kind of shooting him blessings and it feels good. And he know how to have the right attitude on both ends. Both ends. Shit, I, I believe that we go, you have to learn that. You all of us have to learn it. And that's what we are learning, actually. We we in the middle of learning it. How to how to uh, act in in when it get tough, and how to act when things ain't so tough. We learning that, brothers. You see, That's right, bro. Test after test, test after test, Akia. Um, so let's jump back to this. Uh, let's jump back to this in uh, Sirach. We left off in verse five. It says, "For gold is tried in the fire." It says, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Going all the way back to the verse, very first scripture that I, the Spirit of the Lord had me drop. Um, Isaiah 48 and 10. You are chosen in the furnace of, a, of, a, of adversity. And then in this one, it says, gold is trying to fire an acceptable man. God damn, at least we, at least we have that that the Lord is uh, speaking about us. We may be the ones that uh, could be acceptable to the Lord, man. We could be acceptable to him. You know what I mean? And what better feeling than to... What better feeling there is out there than to please the Heavenly Father? You see? So it says... It says, believe in him and he will help thee. Order that way of right and trust in him. And that's what all of us continually need to understand. When you're going through your crap... Continue to lean on the Lord, man. You know? Lean on the Lord. Call on the, call on the Lord. I don't care if you ain't in your closet, man. That's all. I, that's how I move. I don't care about my closet, man. I may be at a fucking gas station. I'm calling a fucking Heavenly Father right now, man. Fuck, Lord. I'm going through this shit. Please help me. You know what I mean? A lot of times... Uh, you know what I mean? But um, a lot of times, it'd be... Sometimes you you could uh call brother. Not so many brother has that type of... um. Leeway though, you don't, you know, you know, but ultimately you're able to call on the Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? Call on the Heavenly Father. Don't be like a little church boy and shit when you call on the Heavenly Father, man. Be a be yourself. Be yourself. The Lord created you to be yourself. Be yourself when you call on the Lord. Be yourself. But of course, apply the scriptures um on the rules. It explains to us when you call on the Lord how you're supposed to call on Him. But be yourself at the same time. All right? The scriptures talk about don't babble before the Lord. The scriptures talk about prepare thyself before thou prayest. Them different little things like that. You know what I mean? But, <clears throat> but call on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. That's all you're going to have, man. You're going to have to learn how to, you, hey, brethren, I have to learn how to be by myself in this thing. You have to learn how to be by yourself. You see? You ain't gonna always have a brother there chilling and you know basically keeping you company, you know, keeping you company. Something you're gonna have to learn how to be by yourself. 
in it and to embrace that. You know? All right? So, um, it says, Ye that fear the Lord, verse 7 in Sirach 2, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest you fall. So the Lord is warning us, look, when I put you through your things, if you don't wait for me, you, you go aside, you're going to fall. It's like the, the, the playbook is written here for you. When you read it and you understand it correctly, it, it's really simplicity. But then when you get put in your challenges, that's when it gets, that's when the, the, the that's when the challenge comes. But the, the, the instruction was very simple. Just don't go aside. Don't curse the Heavenly Father to his face. Don't blame the Heavenly Father for your situation. Don't do that. Job didn't do that. Yahweh Shai didn't get on that cross. And when he was, after he got beat, and his, his life left his, buddies, his body and spilled all over the floor. And then he got nailed to the cross. He didn't say, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't disrespect the Heavenly Father, in other words. You see, he didn't do all that. Neither, uh, neither did Jeremiah. And we know Jeremiah caught hell. And a different various man of the scriptures, Joseph. Joseph was in prison for, for no reason for, uh, for two years, man. But you know what they did, man? They continued to lean on our Lord. And now it's our time, brethren, to, to prove ourselves that, 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 we believe uh, of the same mind to do so, to lean on the Lord. And we, this is, it's about the Lord, man. And the different things we're dealing with, it's just, that's what it is, man. It's just what it is. And that's just what it is. What more could you say? It's just what it is. You know what I mean? We're not the Heavenly Father. We can't change things. We can't manipulate things and make things do different. All right? We're the creation of this thing. All right? <clears throat> Let me see. Um, now we're back here in Sirach 8. And one more verse here in the Sirach, the second chapter, verse 8. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him, and your war, your reward should not fail. So at the end of the day, brothers, you best believe the Lord gonna give us a reward too. So that 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 that's 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 the cool part about this, man. All right. Just could you talk about how the Heavenly Father is gonna give us fame and a land that he made a shame. We're going to get that respect back, brothers. We're going to get that respect. All right? We're going to get honored for believing in the Heavenly Father first before, before the creation, the people in the world did it. And it was only a little bit of these men that believed. You see? Lord willing, whoever these men are, whoever these guys are, they're going to be, they're going to be uh, drinking first with your house. It's a lot of different things of the reward. But you gotta have that balance in mind when you're dealing with your crap. And hey, I and I keep it front with you. When you're dealing with your crap, it's hard to remember. Um, it's hard to remember, you know, the goodness because you're dealing with something so heavy. But there's a verse that even touches on that. And that's in the book of uh, what is that? Uh, that's in the book of Sirach, chapter eleven. Chapter eleven, I think it's like verse yeah, verse twenty-five. It says, "In the day of prosperity." There is a forgetfulness of affliction. In a day of affliction, there's no remembrance of prosperity. So we have understanding. We know when we're going through our hell, it's it's like it's Satan trying to make you forget. It's it's demons trying to make you forget about the brighter side of things or the light at the end of the tunnel. But we men have understanding. We understand that, oh, that, that's a demon. That's demons fucking with me, man. Let me call the name of the Lord and rebuke these demons, right? So let's go right here to the book of Habakkuk real quick, man. <clears throat> it's a further drive at home. And um, I don't want to be here too long. This Habakkuk chapter 2, let's start right at, I mean not Habakkuk, Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to start right here at 12. Oh, you know what? That's why I'm saying Habakkuk. Because I had looked up the name for Habakkuk. Uh, which, you know what? Before I say that, what I did was I etymology the word embrace which the, the word embrace is a compound word. It's two words put together. The prefix um, is M, which means, um, it says M, which means in. And then uh, the suffix is brace, which means the arms. 
So the word embrace literally means to, to put in the arms, to grab it. You know? Well, brethren, you're going to have to grab your hell and understand for what it is. You have to lock it in, embrace it. You know? That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to and just and just deal with it, hold it into the until until the Lord lighten it up. You know what I'm saying? Like the scriptures say, show yourself a man. You're going to have to show yourself a man. You're going to have to lock down and face it. And this is all what all of us brothers is dealing with, which that's why I looked up Habakkuk because the word, the name Habakkuk means to embrace. That's the Hebrew word for embrace. All right. I actually didn't write down the Hebrew word itself. I meant to write that down, but I forgot. But um, that's what the word means. So our forefather Habakkuk, was an example for all Israel. Look, you got to embrace. You got to embrace the things that the Lord, not just bad, but good, all of it, all of it, man. You got to embrace everything. You got to hold in your arm and hug it. Come to understand it. You know? That's right, brother. Now, let's jump right here to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to start right at verse 12. It says, Wherefore, lift up hands, which hang down in feeble knees. Listen to this. It says, And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. When you get in with your stuff, you got to learn. You, you, you got to fight. As Paul said it, fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight, man. You have to fight. Because if you don't, that, 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 that bitterness within your soul, that lameness, as the scripture just explained it, all right. It says that, that it says uh, that lame. It says it says which is lame turn you out the way. That's gonna get you out of the way. Whatever affliction you deal with, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna try to give you the right to talk against the heavenly Father. Well, Father, you didn't do this, so I didn't do that. Or you put this on me, and I didn't do that. That's what that lameness would do, or that affliction would do to you, man. Which is a, just a demon at the end of the day. When you got the understanding of the scriptures, afflictions is demons, man. You got a problem with your computer, they call gremlins. That's a, de that's a demon on your computer. You got a problem with your woman, that's a demon on her. All right? Somebody at the job, they got a demon on them, which is causing you afflictions. If you sick... That's spirits. We know Yahweh Shai cast out spirits from people who, who, who have sick illnesses and sicknesses. That's what these different things are. So you got to be combating these different um, energies, these different lameness that's within you. You know? And to all the brethren that's out there that be dealing with severe ailments, man, that's, come on, man. Come on, man. Them brethren, hey, all praise y'all by Shema Shai for placing the spirit on them brethren to st still be here. Because there ain't nothing like being sick. I remember, um, I remember I used to tell myself being a young man, I would say, I'd rather go to school than be sick. And I hated going to school. I hated going to school. But I'd rather have went to school than to deal with being sick, you know what I mean? All of us know how sickness doesn't feel good. And there's brethren out there that's dealing with severity of sicknesses. So you 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 always gotta like the big brother out here Brock be saying you always gotta count your blessings, man. You always gotta be counting. You always gotta think to yourself that it could've been worse. You know what I mean? And this is gonna shake balance within you. It says um. It says um. Verse fourteen. It says. Follow peace with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently. Let me see. Am I, yeah, I'm going to 15. Yeah, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of the Heavenly Father, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby you, thereby you be defiled. So you don't want your different hells to switch your mind up. And now you're cursing the Heavenly Father. You got you to gotta fight through that thing, man. Find that light at the end of the tunnel. You digging for that light. You know what I mean? So let's grab this little, 
these little enders right here real quick. I got two enders for you, for you brethren. A little amount of sisters out there. And even for myself, because shit, brothers, I ain't no fucking different. <laughs> well, I'm going through, I'm going through it just like any other brethren and everything, man. But it's all good though, man. I, you know, we men of understanding. This is what it is. Alright? And we're gonna be our end the end of our stick is gonna be greater. You know? Like as it's written, um, um, the afflictions that we are dealing with now cannot be compared with the glory that we shall receive. In other words, so you gotta you gotta constantly remember these scriptures, brothers. If you ain't remembering these scriptures, you ain't gonna make it, man. Without y'all, Bashimel Shai, you ain't gonna make it. All right, you ain't gonna make it. You gotta be about this this word to to combat your mind to help you, man. This is up in Peter's chapter two. I mean, First Peter's. Chapter 1, verse 6. It says, um, it says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith being more precious than that than a fine gold that perisheth, that though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and the glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai, man. So right now we in heavy manifold temptations, of course, man. Sometimes just boredom alone is a is a uh, is an affliction. You just bored as fuck, and it's an affliction. Like shit, hey, fuck this place. I, I can't. I want to get out of here. But it said the trial of our faith is being tried, so that we may be able to be, um, like it said, so we may be able to. It says might be found unto the praise and the honor and the glory and the glory. At the appearing of Yahweh Shai, that's what it is, man. At least when Yahweh Shai pull up, hey brothers, we will we'll be at least to be able to say and and have the actions, the the works behind it to prove that. Look, man, Lord, for your sake, I was I, I fucking just stuck in there the best of my ability. I stuck in there. And Yahweh Shai, what do you think Yahweh Shai gonna do, man? Thou faithful and wise servant, go read the parable. You've been faithful over it. Over this few things, go be faithful over over many things. You see? So that's 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 the that's the that's the that's the counter to this crap that we're dealing with. Being in this wicked ass society, man, suffering for our sins in an evil ass world. You see? Let's go to Timothy's real quick. Last one I have here. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's start right here at the verse 8. It said, uh, verse 5. It says, But thou watch. It says, But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. You got to endure them. Now you understanding what Yahweh Shai said. He didn't endure to the end. He didn't just say that because, man. The words, the words, the words can, can really comprehend the feeling and emotion that we was going to have to em embrace. You see? But now that we hear, you know that you got to endure. And that's what it is. Or you just not going to make it. Which one do you want to pick? You know? It says, But watch thou in all things, adore affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Continue to do the work of the Lord. It says, Make foolproof thy ministry. Make foolproof it. You ain't going through this for no reason. Tell yourself that, man. I'm fucking going through this for a reason, man. I got purpose. I'm going through it for a reason. See? You, and that reason is to make foolproof your ministry. I believe in the Lord, and I have works to show it. Because the grace of the Lord that's been placed upon me. Y'all about Shemin Al-Shah broke a thumb. Right? It says, for I am now ready to be offered... At the time of my departure, in my and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Don't all of us want to be able to say that? Lord willing. So these different up and down days, we just gonna embrace them. Sometimes it's gonna hurt. Sometimes you're gonna be in jams that you're gonna need brother and help. Sometimes you're gonna be in jams that's gonna make you go broke, but you're gonna have to build back up. I don't know. Sometimes the jam is going, you have to start over on certain things. 
but the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. He has chosen us in a furnace of affliction. He chosen us to deal with this, th these different things. It says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. You see that right there? So Paul said, look, not, not to me only that's dealing with this stuff and keeping it, keeping it solid as a rock to the best of our ability. Not, not to me only, but all those who love the appearing of Yahweh Shai, man. You know? And if you're telling yourself you love Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, well, love is an action word. You're going to have to, you're going to have to prepare your soul for temptation and continue to move forward and whatever it get put on your plate and try to understand it. You know what I mean? Try to understand it. Never curse the heavenly father to his face. That's what you don't want to do. And pray to the Lord that he just get you and help you and get you out of it. Lean on the Lord. Getting you, it's getting you closer to the Lord. You see? So yeah, man. I pretty much tagged everything in the spirit of the Lord. I don't want to grab no, no verses off the board today. But but you brethren best believe that I've seen them in the spirit of the Lord. And you know, it's class on the board as well. But I just wanted to talk about from the days you up to the days you down, embrace them all. Come to learn. Come to be in the spirit in this thing. Come in it. You know what I mean? Coming to understanding and just moving forward, man. Days is going to angle. It's going. It's not going to feel good. Some days you're going to feel like fucking elbowing somebody in the eyelid. I don't know. You're going to you're gonna feel like, you know, putting it to somebody. But then those days you're going to be maybe with brethren, sipping with brethren, and y'all just feeling like y'all all, all y'all in the kingdom already. You know? Just embrace them all. Continue to stay balanced. And yeah, hey, pray to the Lord that He deliver us out of here sooner than later, Akim. Hey, Shema Yashaal Yahweh Hayinawa Yahweh Kud, which is Hero Israel. The Lord our power is one. You just heard it in the Paleo Hebrew. You brother and stay strong out there. Continue to deal with your afflictions and continue to embrace them. Shalom, Akim. Step shalom.